What's up? This is EasyOSX, and welcome back to our How to Use iMovie series. And in this video, we're going to be talking about how to add and manipulate background audio. More specifically, we're going to be talking about background music in this case. However, this can be used for background narration as well. So, as you've previously seen, you can have two layers, uh, one for video and for audio. You can, of course, have an additional layer for picture-in-picture, -picture, overlapping video, effects, etc but you also have this layer down below for background audio. Again, typically for background music. You can see by this little music symbol here. So if you want to add audio, you can of course go to audio. So in the audio tab, the first thing you have is the music section, which this is stuff that you've gotten from iTunes or that you've bought from another vendor or you've ripped from a CD and that's in your music library either in the iTunes app or in the music app if you're using Catalina or a newer version of Mac OS and again since these are things that you've bought or that have been imported into your music library you can actually use them inside of your iMovie project but you need to keep in mind that many of these are probably going to be things that have licenses attached to them meaning that you might be able to get away with using them if you're say using a personal project but if you're going to be putting them out in the public particularly if you're going to be getting paid for them there are license agreements that you have to be aware of so be careful with that now you may also see things that have been imported into the music library that aren't necessarily music voice memos from your iPhone or iPad is a good example of this. But otherwise this is primarily music that you've purchased and imported into your primary music library. The second section is sound effects and these are, well like the name describes, sound effects but also little pre-made jingles from Apple. And these are royalty free, license free and you've probably heard them in a bunch of either YouTube videos or even things like uh, local commercials. Uh, so for example this road trip song, or there's three versions here, long, medium, short. Uh, if I click on this So you've probably heard this in, say, like a YouTube video where they're doing a, a road trip, as the name implies, or even something, say, like a, uh, a local car commercial. Like I said, these are royalty-free. These are ones that you can use pretty freely and you're not going to get in trouble with. So this is a great way. But because they are pretty commonly used, a lot of people are probably going to recognize them, at least some of the more popular ones. So just keep that in mind. And there are also things like uh, sound effects and stuff. So you can get like sitcoms laughs. <laughs> or clapping. So you get a couple other things. And you can see, of course, whenever that you play one of these things, you've got the waveform up here. And if you hover over it, you get to play some of it. And you can even see the line playing when you hit the play button. And the last thing is GarageBand, which these are things that you've made in GarageBand, you've imported into GarageBand, your own production. So if you've got your own custom music, say like making a music video or something, uh, and you're using GarageBand, this is where you'll find it. Now background music can be a great way to spice up your video, give it a little bit more texture, a little bit more flavor. Keep in mind, it's not meant for every video. So this video, for example, being a tutorial video of connecting a switch, uh, excuse me, a switch controller to your Mac, this really doesn't benefit from having background music, but we're going to use this for example because this is the project that we have been using. Now I'm going to drag this yearbook long into the timeline, and you can see by default it actually is being added to as another audio layer on top of the uh, as the voiceover that I did. But I don't want it to be there. I don't want this to be messing with stuff. So I'm actually going to add it to this background and you can see there's an, a line that has appeared so now this is acting as a background layer and so this is completely separate from whatever video that I've got this is completely separate from everything else and I can manipulate this without necessarily having to worry as much about what's going on in the main timeline so if I play this what's up this is EZOSX and in this video I'm going to show you how to make me it so that works. Again, a tutorial video is not particularly a great place for background audio, but it's useful. Now, what you'll notice also is it's pretty loud. It's almost drowning out my voiceover. So we need a way to lower the audio. And there's two ways to do this, the easy way and the more professional controlled way. So if I want to go lower the audio, I can click the video. And particularly if I want to lower it just when a particular clip is playing, I can go up here to the top and click on the sound icon, looks at the volume icon actually, and 
this option that says lower volume of other clips. So I can click on this, and now I have this option here to lower uh, the, what's called the ducking volume, which is just kind of like imagine like your head ducking and stuff. So you can actually see down here as well, the volume is automatically lowered and it picks up after that video clip is done. So it only applies to audio played over this video clip and that also affects the intro. So you got to be aware of that as well, which is we're going to get to the professional option in a second. So if I play this now. What's up? It's EGOSX. In this video, I'm going to show you how to so yeah, you can see that the background audio is definitely lower, but so is my voiceover, which is not what we want exactly. Now, if you're just using something, if you're not using a voiceover like this, and you can see like I have still my original voiceover from the clip, then this won't be affected. The clip's own audio is not gonna be affected. It's just any audio that's playing outside of the main video clip is gonna be affected. In this case, my voiceover and the background music. And you can also see when the clip finishes, the audio fades back up, which again, also handy. This is gonna be good if you wanna have like certain clips where maybe you have like pictures being shown or video that don't necessarily need audio, um, but then you wanna cut over to say someone's talking about their experience. So uh, I think of a commercial maybe like you have, say Whitewater Rapids, and you could have a group of people going down the boat and they're you know going up and down the rapids, it's cool, and then it cuts over to someone talking about it and it lowers their audio. That's just an example. Now I'm going to undo this because, again, the problem is we don't want, in this case, we don't want my secondary voiceover to be muted by, you know, by that option. We want it to play louder than what I've got in the background audio. Another way that you can just do this is you can, of course, adjust the volume line here, or you can go up, click the, the audio, and go to the volume tab, and you can just adjust the volume on here. Up and down, you can see that the waveform, same thing if you grab this little line here and drag it up and down. Now this affects the entire clip, or at least, you know, what's selected. Of course, I can split this, and now it's only going to affect that one section of the clip. But this is going to be really annoying if you're trying to, you're trying to like have certain times where it lowers and falls, and then you're, you know, you're, you're separating clips and stuff. That's not really helpful. So what's a better way to do this? So iMovie also has a more professional way with what's called keyframing or keystoning. So what I can do is if I go to a part of the timeline and I hold down the option key and click on the line, you see that I get this little diamond right here and that's a reference or keyframe. By itself, this really doesn't do anything. If I drag it up and down, you can see it still messes with the clip's volume just in its entirety. But what I can do is I can do this again somewhere else. Again, hold down the option key and click on the line and you can see now there's two keyframes. So what's that do? If I now drag this keyframe, everything after it moves, you can see the timeline to the right of it is adjusting, but also between this and the left keyframe is now an adjustment, in this case going down. Now everything to the left of this keyframe, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Uh, well, wasn't much of a zoom, but you can see everything just to the left of this keyframe is still at full volume. And actually, I can move this keyframe left or right, and you can see the audio adjusting. So everything to the left of this keyframe is staying the same, and then everything to the right of the second keyframe is staying the same, but everything in the middle is now adjusting. So you can see if I do this, you see the audio adjusted up a little bit. So now we actually have a fade in, or fade out, depending on how you want to look at it. So if I hit the play button now, What's up? This is EZOSX, and in this video, I'm going to show you... So that actually kind of faded out just a little bit, and I can elongate that a little bit. Let me adjust it here, so you can tell a little bit more. I'm going to extend this over a little ways. So if I do this... What's up? This is EZOSX, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to connect... So, now, everything before is at full volume, and then it fades down, fades out a little bit, and it's still going when I'm speaking. I'm going to show you how to connect in it. But it's not overwhelming. You can now hear me speak much better. And we can do the same the other way. So this keyframe is gonna continue up until, let's say about here. And then I'm gonna do another keyframe here. There we 
go. And drag this up. And there we go. So now. Joy-Con to your Mac. So it does just the same thing. But now I have an easy little fade in and fade out. And of course you can do this in other places in the timeline. So you kind of want to just make sure, depending on what you're trying to do, that you're generally going to have to use two keyframes for every transition. One that's going to be kind of like the stabilizer or like the start point, and then one that's the end point. So where is this useful? So an example might be if you've ever seen like a TV show or listened to a podcast, something like that, you might have noticed like they start with some music and then the music starts to fade as people start talking or the people come on screen depending on whether you're listening or, or uh, watching something. So this is a great purpose for it. And same kind of thing if you're going to have a, uh, you have someone talking and then you want to cut over to maybe like a montage of someone doing some sweet tricks or, uh, or just like the scenes of people just kind of interacting in their daily lives where their audio doesn't really matter. So that's a place where you, you can really use these keystones and keyframes to your advantage. But that's going to be it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like, share it around with your friends. And if you want to get more Mac tips, tricks, and advice, you can subscribe to the channel, as well as check us out on our website, easyosx.net, as well as on social media. Thanks again for watching.